Good morning to you all, and thank you for joining us in this rather unusual candle mass service. In the words of the traditional city greeting, you are all most welcome. And there can never have been a time where that welcome and those words are more appropriate. Both the company chaplain and I have been very keen that despite COVID and the lockdown, that we should continue to recognize and celebrate Candle Mass since it's such an important part of our annual calendar. The opportunity for us to rededicate ourselves to the company and to the ethos of the wider livery movement. These are difficult days, but we will get through them by working positively together. And I'm sure that our company chaplain's homily will, as usual, give us plenty of food for thought. We had originally hoped to hold a normal but socially distant service at St Botolph's with live streaming for those who couldn't actually come to London. But with uh, the lockdown, I'm afraid that fell by the wayside. So here we are with a significantly downsized service, members of the company scattered all over the country and with all the hazards of doing it online, online and live. But I know that we can rely on the skills of our producer, Chris Puxley, to make sure that it all knits together successfully. Knowing the vagaries of Zoom and the internet, the power of prayer can never have been more important than it is right now. So let's begin with the bidding prayer. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Master, for your introduction. As you said, this time last year, the Candle Mass was the final full company function that we were able to attend together at St. Botos without before COVID entered our lives. Today, though, we are unable to enjoy that same camaraderie in person. We are still together in heart and in spirit to seek God's blessing for the year ahead as we join in with this Cook's Candlemas service. Sadly, there are no hymns today, and we begin with the bidding prayer. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to offer to Almighty God our praise and thanks for all his goodness to us. To all men and women and to ask his blessing on the life and work of the worshipful company of cooks, in this spirit let us commend ourselves to Almighty God, asking him to pardon in us all that is amiss and to give us grace to live in fellowship with each other and in peace with all. Remembering especially at this time past master Alan Fairbrass, past master Donald Hodgson, past master Michael Kenyon, and retired free maiden Joyce Howell. Let us give thanks to God for all those in this company who have departed this life and enter in whose heritage we have entered. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have a moment of reflection and if you wish to light a candle in the memory of any loved ones who are struggling during this extended lockdown, or suffering from COVID in mind, body, or spirit, please do so as we listen to Gloria by Vaughan Williams. This is sung by the choir of St. Michael's Cornhill.
The reading, the reading is, is take, take, taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. On the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus and his disciples were called to the wedding. Now, when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. But Jesus replied to her, What have I to do with this? My hour has not yet come. But the mother said unto the servants, Whatever he says unto you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of purifying the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the pots with water, and they filled them to the brim. Then he said unto them, Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. Now when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and did not know whence it came, but the servants who drew the water knew, the master of the feast called unto the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth the good wine, and when the guests have drunk well, then that which is worse. But you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Here ends the reading. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, those of you who regularly attend our candle mass service will know that over the years there are three basic readings given for Christ's presentation at the temple. Some of you may have noted that today's reading is not one of them. It's about the wedding at Cana. And you may feel it's slightly strange, this choice of reading for the times we're living in. However, if you stay with me, rather than grabbing another coffee, I hope all will become clear. This wonderful, worshipful company of cooks was born in 1482. And as it grew over the last 539 years, it has faced many challenges, crises, plagues, wars, financial ups and downs, changes in the nation's leadership, from kings and queens to a variety of political parties. And yet, thank God, cooks have survived, even thrived in spite of all these changes and lived up to the motto on our crest, vulnerati non victi, wounded, not conquered, not overcome. And though the COVID plague has wounded us, our families, our friends, and the nations of our United Kingdom and the nations of the world, we have not been overcome. And though this family of cooks may be made up of those with differing views on faith or no faith, we still carry a worshipful Christian heritage as the cook's company that, undertake, that undergirds our purpose as a livery. No one is more fortunate than I to be the company chaplain and still be able to say grace at dinners and to share this annual candle mass service with you. As we look back on the year that is past and rededicate ourselves and the company to the year that lies ahead. So in spite of lockdown, we have not been overcome, but we're doing our best, the best we can to maintain the life of the cooks in the face of a plague of sickness causing many to pass on, often before their time. Sadly, as we know, we have seen the death toll rise to over 100,000 people. This past year, we have, as noted in the bidding prayer, lost several much-loved members of our own company, including Alan Fairbrass, past master and almoner, Donald Hodgson, past master, Michael Kenyon, past master, and my aunt, 
Joyce Powell, retired free maiden. Sadly, due to COVID, we were not able to say our farewells as we would have wished, but we continue to pray for their families and their friends who are still grieving the loss of their loved ones. Now, the traditional focus at Candlemas is to celebrate the naming of the baby Jesus as God's son and as our saviour and as a light coming into a dark world. But Jesus didn't stay as a baby. He grew to fulfil his call as a saviour. And a saviour is what we need at the moment, as well as vaccines, to save us from our circumstances now beyond or seemingly beyond our control. Just as Jesus was needed at a wedding feast in Cana, as we heard in today's reading, so we need a saviour now. Like us before COVID, life was going on as normal. The people of Cana, they were living the good life, enjoying themselves, especially at this week-long wedding feast, with most of the local community either invited or involved in this marvellous celebration. The caterers were busy, the cooks were fully employed, the hospitality business was thriving with everything under control. Or was it? Something was not as it should be. A crisis was slowly beginning to emerge that would change this whole situation. One part of this special celebration was not under control and was about to ruin the party. The good life that they were accustomed to depended on everything running smoothly, everything being under control, just like at a cook's dinner. But, and we know that life is full of buts, the wine had run out. The celebration would be wrecked, the guests would leave, the hosts would be humiliated, and the caterers out of a job. Fortunately, in this instance, one of the guests was a saviour, someone who could control the situation, who could save the day. And so we find Jesus miraculously turning water into wine. He not only averts the crisis, but makes the celebration even better than it was before, giving the best wine to last to both the guests and the hosts. The best wine they had ever tasted. Well, great story, you may say, but how does it relate to us today in the situation we find ourselves? Before COVID, we too were celebrating the good life, relatively speaking, all was well, even if you didn't support Brexit. The Cook's company continued about its business and the hospitality industry was flourishing. All seemed under control, except perhaps our ability to control global warming. And yet, something was not as it should be. A crisis was starting to emerge that would drastically change our lives, our livelihoods and our way of living. Something that was not under our control was about to ruin the party. A new virus appeared and reawakened our deep, deep fear about the one thing we know we cannot control, and that is death. The last great taboo in the world today, the unspoken inevitability of our own demise and the fear that comes with it, and the fact that we are not in control when our end comes. And this is especially true when we see this random plague affecting so many people so quickly. So some of you may be thinking, well, thank you, Chaplain, there's enough gloom and doom around without you adding to it this morning. So here is the good news. The provision of vaccines in such a short time is nothing short of miraculous. The skill and care of the frontline hospital staff is truly amazing. And the way that communities have risen to the new challenges is wonderful to behold. But there is also a saviour we can ask to help us. One who says, I am with you, do not fear, even in the valley of the shadow of death. For there is healing, there is eternal life. For Jesus was the great lockdown breaker, breaking free out of death and out of a tomb and rising to new life and inviting us to join him at a heavenly banquet, where not only will the wine never run out, but it will be the finest you have ever tasted. 
And a final thought. I'm sure Jesus loved the cooks, our charity, our hospitality, our sense of family, and our celebration feasts are all very biblical. May we continue to welcome Jesus into our company, the one who was mortally wounded, but never overcome. Because when Jesus is invited in, he changes things, not just for the better now, but for the best forever. Amen. Well, I'm so pleased that we have been joined once again by the wonderful choristers from St. Michael's Cornhill. They have become a key ingredient to our services over the years, lifting our spirits and calming our souls. And we thank them for sharing their music with us today. We're now going to hear the anthem, When Mary to the Temple Went. A time for prayer. Let us pray for the Queen and all who are set in authority under her, especially the Lord Mayor and the Corporation of this city. Almighty God, the foundation of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, the Parliaments and all her dominions, and all who are set in authority under her, especially the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor, the Aldermen, 
and the sheriffs and all that bear office here. For the master, second master, wardens, court of assistants, liverymen, freemaidens free and apprentices of this worshipful company of cooks, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness and peace to the honour and glory of thy name and the good of thy church and the people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, guide with thy Holy Spirit those who serve in the commercial life of the nation. Grant them to look on their life's work as an opportunity of service rather than of gain. And so bless them that the whole nation may be better for their labours. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, our Father, increase in this and every nation the sense of human brotherhood, true respect for man, woman and child, loyalty and service and charity, happiness in work and justice in reward, that our homes may be kept safe and pure, our cities renewed in beauty and order, and all our world may reflect the radiance of thy kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless the churches of the City of London, built gloriously in thy name. Fill them with thy spirit, that each may be a powerhouse of prayer, a community of love, and a witness to thine unfailing care. We ask all this for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have our prayer of thanksgiving and dedication read by Liverman Katie Powell. Our God, our Father, we thank you for the rich inheritance we enjoy, for the lives and vision of our company benefactors, Walter Mangard, John Shield, Edward Corbett, John Phillips, Samuel Birch, Robert Miller, Arthur Fordham, Sydney Bishop, Andrew Murdoch, and others, and for the loyalty and generosity of all who have dedicated their service and lives to the company. We pray that we, in our generation, may be given the grace to use to the utmost all that we have inherited, so that by the way we work, the way we pray, and the way we serve you and one another, we may enrich our company for the benefit of others, the fulfillment of ourselves, and the honour and glory of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we close this year's Candle Mass service with the blessing. May God bring healing to our nation and all nations. May he give to you and to those you love his comfort and his peace, his light in the darkness and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you this day and forevermore. Amen. I'm now going to hand you back to the master who I think is going to share a few words with us. Uh, thank you, Keith. That brings us to the end of the formal part of our proceedings. And I, I'm just sorry that we can't now go for a sumptuous cook and butler lunch at Cutler's Hall. But I can invite you all to join me just for a glass of wine and a chat. But while we have everyone still here with us, there are three people who deserve particular thanks for making our service happen today. First, the father of the company and our chaplain for conducting the service, and especially for yet again giving us some serious food for thought, for inspiration and hope in these difficult days. Secondly, to Peter R. Clark for doing all the background admin without which no event like this can be successful. And finally, my particular and special thanks go to Chris Puxley 
for his enthusiastic approach to the challenge and for using all his technical expertise to make sure it actually ran so smoothly. Now, I'm glad to say that a bottle of wine has appeared by my side as if by magic. So when everyone has a charged glass, I'd like to start this session with three toasts. After our candle mass service, it is traditional to toast our company. So even though we can't have our lunch, now is as good a time as any to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the toast to the worshipful company of cooks. May it flourish, root and branch, forever. The company. Secondly, today we recognise four members of the company who have died this year. Sadly, we haven't been able to hold any form of memorial service for them. And this will, of course, be remedied when we're able to socialise again. But in the meantime, I ask you to drink a toast to the departed, to Alan Fairbrass, Don Hodgson, Michael Kenyon and Joyce Powell. The departed. And finally, in recognition for all their work behind the scenes, which has enabled this service to go ahead so successfully, I give you a toast to Chris Puxley and all the support team with grateful thanks for everything that you have done for the service today. Chris Buxley and the team. Now the floor is open for chat and it's difficult to control discussion with so many people at a time like this. And all I would ask is that when you're not speaking, may I ask you just to keep yourselves on mute because that will save, uh, save a lot of background noise. I have rabbited on for long enough so it's over to you. <laughs>